Today on The Grave Talks, Demonic Culture, a conversation with Peter James Dowling. Is demonic activity on the rise? Is there something in our culture that has turned a switch onto high when it comes to the world of dark energies infesting our environment? There is a hierarchical system of demons who want to maintain control of the living and seem to stop at nothing to do so. How does the living protect themselves from such forces? Today, we discuss demonic culture with Peter James Dowling on The Grave Talks. Well, there's many ways you can be a demonologist. Uh, Unfortunately, like uh, the last interview, I didn't want to become a demonologist. I wound up crossing that line to a certain point. And I've heard other people telling me that 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 I'm needed by God to cast these things out, to cleanse, to get into the metaphysical side of the paranormal. Um... My way was through uh, my confirmation through a Catholic priest, and I'm not even Catholic. Mm -hmm. Um, And this Catholic priest was an exorcist because this pope has recommended that every diocese in the United States has at least one exorcist because things are getting worse. Um, Others, what they do is a lot of them are clergy and part of the cloth, and they get their training from Rome or a Bible college. Um, you know, to, you know, be certified to be reverend or um, a priest. Uh, The misconception of it all is a lot of people think that uh, they can go online and get certified as a demonologist, and uh, they're asking for trouble. Um, They're going to make things a lot worse. I've seen people do investigations or awaken a... uh, entity that was in a home that was very negative and made things worse for the clients. It was dor- it lay dormant when they came in to do a cleansing or they came in to do an investigation. Um, a lot of the clients have complained in the past that things have worsened and uh, many times they would flee from the residence and Many times these entities would follow them no matter where they went. So whenever I have a client, I tell them, you can't run from this thing, but the only way to deal with it is to fight it. Um, So uh, the thing is, I also notice, you know, I've had people come to me and said they want to be a demonologist, and many times the red flags would go up because uh, it's not something that we want to do. Um, I've talked to priests and exorcists that it was a field that they didn't want to get into it because it's very dark um once you cross that line bad things do happen i'm constantly attacked metaphysically spiritually and sometimes physically and um it's constant you declared war on these entities uh so uh, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, and, and, there, I mean, and you, you answered the question, certainly, and then you gave me more questions uh, to ask uh, because <laughs> because that's just the nature of how all of this works. Um, yes, so, unfortunately. So, <laughs> so, so let, let's talk about this. Let, let's unpack that a little bit. Someone who, who goes sure. online, and, and, there, and, and I, I, I believe a lot of people, probably a majority of them, who want to who actively want to be a demonologist. And and I know you're, I totally understand what you're saying. It's not something you really want to do. If you fully understand what it is you're saying you're wanting right. to do, you wouldn't be going, raising your hand, pick me, pick me. Um, but someone who does go online, someone who's excited about this idea, someone who's watched ghost adventures one too many times and owns one too many black shirts uh, that, that, that says, uh, I think I'm going to go try and do this and be a demonologist. Um, w- what is the difference in terms of knowledge and, and preparedness that one would have from simply studying online um, and, and being certified by, you know, who Bill Joe's demonology school, you know, versus uh, versus being, you know, someone who's who's been brought into this. 
uh, certified by the church and really almost reluctantly like yourself having gotten into that area of it um, in terms of how the, the the tools that they're bringing in mentally to a case, uh, someone who's been certified, who has gone down that track such as you versus someone who is, you know, almost, you know, too giddy about the idea. Um, what What is the difference here in terms of knowledge uh, that 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 each individual would have? Well, it seems to be a lot of naiveness on a lot of people. They don't know what they're doing. They, uh, John Zappis has warned people many, many times that uh, uh, it's a very dangerous field. I can't, he, he explains it perfectly and how it is. And, you know, um, there's, a, there's people who think it's really cool. Um, they watched a lot of TV. There's a lot of things out there that kind of glorify uh, the demonic, uh, subliminally sometimes, you know, through games, through different movies. I mean, it even goes down to ch uh, children's program of subliminal messages. And, uh, uh, you know, the, it, it seems like society uh, uh, fantasize about these things, um, uh, mostly it's false truths, and people they don't have a clue of what it's like um, to deal with these entities. And the thing is, is they're, I believe that they're naive. Um, I don't, I'm not saying that as a negative, you know, I'm coming from a negative platform. Um, the way for me, I did not want to cross that line as, as I said before, and uh, I was running into demonic cases and I didn't know how to deal with it. And um, every fiber of my being, I didn't want to deal with it at all. And, um, but something takes over me uh, when I uh, do this thing and I do pray and I do protect myself. Um, it is very, very, very dangerous. And once you cross that line, you've actually declared war on these entities. They know when you cross that line, and there's no turning back. Your life changes forever. It's never the same. And it's a constant battle with dark forces and these entities. Uh, it, even, the, even the church and other religions, they, you know, they'll educate you, that, but they don't. Um, it, it, it's so dangerous that a layman, in layman's turns, it's not good unless you become educated in the field. Uh, you might think that you're called to do something like this and you have the heart to help people, but then necessarily it doesn't mean that this is, uh, this is God's plan for you. And um, if you're not careful, um, you can get in serious trouble because it seems like, you know, and we have so many fields in the paranormal other than demonology, but I think there's an attraction to it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of people ask me questions about it because they're fascinated by it. But I like to warn people just so it, it's a seed planted in their head to know, um, you know, the dangers, the hidden dangers, because we talked about the dangers just paranormal last time. Um, but when it comes to demonology, it's very, very dark. And I have seen people who weren't called to do this and went into it for the wrong reasons, winding up being dark themselves and falling into a trap. And they're starting to do spells and they're starting to work with these dark entities. And I, I've had people from satanic churches and a lot of other cults ask me, What's it take to be a demonologist? And I knew that they were going to use it for bad things and not for the good. And, um, you know, I do it only to serve God, only to, to help people understand what's out there from my experience. Let's talk about some of the, the points that you made uh, in, in all of that. You had mentioned something that I find interesting to talk about, subliminal messages. Um, and, and you had mentioned sometimes they're even into children's programming, uh, and, and, and they're in all different places. Uh, when it comes to subliminal messaging, 
I, I think quite often a lot of us get this idea that there's some bad person back behind the scenes that's going, I'm going to stick this into this movie and no one's going to catch it, but they're going to somehow get this message or knowledge out of it. Is that always the case where there really truly is some bad person back there that's trying to purposely create a subliminal message into uh, whether it be a piece of advertising or entertainment, or is, is are, are subliminal messages sometimes created inadvertently where the, the creator of, of said piece of, of entertainment uh, is almost used as a vessel without even their knowledge? An example would be, you. I'm not a good painter by any means in terms of art, but if I were to, to go paint, you know, he said, go take a, make a, a picture of that uh, airplane over there and, and paint it. Here's a paint and here's a canvas. We would come back and take a look at that that painting, and I can guarantee it would not look very much like an airplane. Um, may kind of look like Maybe. it, but but somebody's going to go. Yeah. It, it looks like this or it looks like that, and, right? And, and and it's like, yeah, I really didn't intend for it to be like that, but it you know it, it kind of came out that way. Is that how? Sometimes subliminal messaging is is basically encoded into things, or are there more things that we are unaware of of people intentionally trying to put things into media? Because that would certainly require human interaction intervention to do so, uh, to to you know embed things into you know popular culture uh, pieces of entertainment or advertisements. Well, you know, I mean, you. It, <laughs> It, a lot of people would label that abstract art, and I'd probably look at it and say, what the heck is that from a five-year-old? <laughs> well, yes, of course, that would be the first thing. But then, but you could also then make but the I argument understand. of, you know, is there is there a subliminal message in there? And, and well, that... And, and maybe that, a little bit of both. Yeah, and then, maybe that, that, a little bit yeah, of both. That, that's what I wonder about when it comes to uh, take my example aside, but more so when we are talking about, um, you know, real things that are out there. Can you give some examples of of where subliminal messaging has been found uh, in in popular culture? Well, we have, uh, for for instance, um, I know of one case of a child watching some programs and I'm not sure what the programs were, but one woman I was speaking to that had a cousin or a daughter, uh, she was about eight years old and, uh, she went online and she wanted to look up something online and it threw her to a site where it was talking about uh, demons and she she became knowledgeable of what 666 was and everything else and her mother said how did you learn all this she says well I wanted to learn uh, how to tell time and it put me up on this this site with an upside down pentagram and and I learned 666 the number of the beast and everything else and she just, uh, you know, she didn't have parental controls on uh, her computer. Um, it can be, we don't know, I mean, we don't know if, if it's, I'd like to say in my heart that people don't know, or they don't believe in demonic forces. They don't believe that there are angels. Um, so they think it's, uh, cool. It's fun. I mean, the game of thrones that uh, they use a, a specific names of actual names of demons. Uh, you have, uh, card games and what have you that, uh, I can't think of the name right off the bat. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not used to, uh, you know, uh, I've been on sure. radio before and everything, but I always get a little nervous. Sure. But there's, there's games out there that use demon names. Um, there is movies, there's films, uh, there's science fiction or basically sci-fi movies and things like that that use demonic names. Matter of fact, Conjuring 2 keeps talking about a specific demon. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's uh, sometimes Hollywood glorifies these things. I can't say that I think it's for entertainment purposes. Uh, people say, hey, let's use these things 
because everybody likes to be scared. You have people that ghost hunt just for the thrill of it. Yeah. Uh, but they don't realize the the dangers that are involved in it. And uh, I just want you to know, um, because uh, it's in my field, there are angels from heaven, from God. Now, remember, the demonic forces, they are one time created by God. They're fallen angels. They have names similar to some of them, not all of them, but there are some names that are similar to God's angels. That's why it says in uh, religious texts, do not pray to an angel, mm -hmm. because there is also the same name that uh, angel in heaven is also on the other side. And they fall into this earth, and they've declared war on man ever since. And they're just here to destroy people in any way, shape, or possible. And they are so slick. They will, they will get out there and through the media, through uh, social media, through movies, through films, through music, and it affects people's lives. Now, I'm not talking, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, when I, um, Oh, excuse me for a moment. Uh, when I, uh, you know, like Dante's Inferno, uh, it's a video, it's a popular game, you know, it's Sony PlayStation and what have you. There's a lot where they're, they're using the actual demon names mm -hmm. and, uh, where the, and people get wrapped up into that. And, you know, that can lead to infestations that can lead to, attachments over time and uh you know it doesn't happen to everybody but it does you know and i have run into cases very few like i said not every uh, cemetery is haunted and every not every house is haunted and i think i ran across three demonic cases uh in my 34 years what is you know you're, you kind of answered the question but i'd like to expound upon it a little bit what is the risk when a specific demon name is used in a movie or in popular culture or a video game and someone sitting down in their living room, they turn on that DVD or press the on demand play button and they're having their popcorn and, you know, out of the movie pops, you know, all these demonic names um, and, you know, it, it's said out loud. Uh, is is there a risk for that that family who watches that movie one time that uh, of, of something happening or or does more have to go on for just that the exercise of those those names being said aloud uh, in, in a setting for it it to to really attach its claws in and and start to to take some more action than just something that comes out of the speakers it can uh, definitely I never heard of it happening just one time. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's, it's over a period of time of keep playing it. Mm -hmm. However, I do know that when a name is mentioned, um, it knows, uh, and people who have a higher power, they, they know that, uh, you know, as a Christian, I know when I pray, he hears me. Um, it's the same thing when it comes to these entities, especially the, the dark ones. It seems that um, they are aware uh, when their name is. Um, it can be uh, people, to me, it's, it seems like a glorification of that demon's name. Uh, some of them, I, it kind of, last time we had this conversation, I noticed that uh, a lot of these entities don't want to be known. They like to hide in the shadows. They don't, uh, they want you to believe that everything that you do is, uh, you know, uh, from you, um, not that they had played no part of it. Um, but then you have, there's also a side of glorification. Um, and they, some do like that. So it's a fine line between the two. But I would tell people that um, it's not wise to keep saying the name over and over, um, constantly be doing that, because there are people who had problems uh, from playing constant horror movies, especially when the name is uh, spoken. Now, the, th the funniest thing is they know, they know everything about us, 
uh, there's no secret. Uh, you go to, into an exorcism, they uh, will tell you your darkest secret uh, right out there to try to uh, persuade you away from the deliverance, from the prayers, mm -hmm. uh, the rite of exorcism. Uh, they try to make you stutter and follow up to make you feel that you're not going to be able to do it and that you're defeated and walk away. Uh, so, yeah, they know everything. That's why uh, you had Houdini, uh, the great musician back in the 20s and the 30s, he was into spiritualism and mediumship, and his wife, he made a deal with his wife that if any of them passed away, we would, they would come back and they would give a code uh, so they would know that that person is them. Uh, unfortunately, um, from what I've read and from what I, uh, what I know, that never happened, and he kept running into... Uh, fake mediums, uh, fake psychics, and what have you. So it never, or she did, uh, Mrs. Houdini didn't mm -hmm. find the answer that she was looking for. That code never came back. Houdini never came back. So I thought when I was telling my girlfriend that I was going to, you know, would somehow if we could uh, send a code or a message if one of us passed. And she looked at me and she says, but yeah, you know that these demonic forces know that and can come back and will tell the code and everyone's going to think it's you, but it's not you. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, and and, uh, and that, that's the confusing part of, of a lot of this where, you know, you, you can plot this out, this whole plan of, OK, code, so we know it's you. Um, but does, but it could legitimately be you too. I mean, we, we hear plenty of cases where it's not demonic. It literally is someone's grandmother or father that, that has returned simply to, to, you know, watch and stay guard for a short period of time or just to see their grandchildren or, or provide comfort mm -hmm. in a, uh, you know, a time of need. And, and that's, it's not demonic at all, but, but one still sits there and, 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 you know, they want to feel 100% that this is that person, but anyone with, with knowledge of this, including myself, uh, you're going to have that little bit of you that's still going to be saying, I'm not 100% sure that this is who, who I think it is. And sometimes only time can tell you and, and maybe solidify that a little bit better if nothing else happens. Maybe 30 right. years from now, you look back and go, clearly nothing else happened there was comfort that was brought at that moment and i think it was my grandfather or something um then you kind of have that more of a solid answer but um you know in the moment of of the comfort or the visit um you don't know because no. it, it could easily be one way or the other and is there ever a way of of knowing that in the moment where it matters most well, I don't know, and that's the whole thing. I believe I sent you a video of uh, Melody. She is my partner, and she recorded her grandfather and her grandmother that died years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and she recognized the voice, and she broke out in tears. My ex-wife's uh, grandmother passed away many years before I met her, and I played it back, and... Uh, my ex-wife and my ex-mother-in-law broke out in tears and didn't want to tell the uh, the grandfather that, you know, I made contact through a spirit box, um, or actually the EVP was the first time spirit box for the second, mm -hmm. that I caught their voices and they were saying, hello, Melody. Well, like for Melody, it was, uh, hi, Mel, it's me, Pops. And, um, you know, and then the grandmother said, hi. And we were over their grave when we did this. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would love to believe in my heart that it was them. Um, and I really would. But then I looked at Melody and I told um, my ex-wife even at the time, long time ago, it might not be them. You know, and sure. it's sad. But it's, we sometimes we don't want to hear the truth that it's possibly not. Now, you know, there are people out there that think the littlest thing, um, it's got to be demonic. I first go in there for, for, for one thing. When I go and do investigations, I go there to find reasonable explanations to everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for whatever reasons. And 
I look for that first. It's when I cannot explain in detail of uh, this is the reason why your door opens up. You step on a certain board, it opens up. Um, you live in an old house and you have rodents scratching. I, I found traces through uh, my um, my full spectrum light that, uh, you know, my, my black light would show the entrails of the animal's UV light. And, uh, you know, I always find reasonable explanations, you know, like, you know, the EMF is too high, so you have allergic reaction to it. Uh, you have faulty wiring, that's why your light flickers or you've got a bad lamp. Um, so I always look for reasonable explanations to everything first. I go in as a non-believer of the paranormal, even though in my heart, I, from my experiences, <laughs> there are ghosts, there are demonic forces, there are things that we cannot explain. Um, I can tell you a lot about the the demonology side, and I can tell you of, of just regular paranormal investigations uh, on that side. Um, you know, you, they, we have intelligent haunts, we have residual haunts, and we have uh, earthbound and non-earthbound entities. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have to put all that in the equation whenever we do an investigation to find out what's actually in there but i have gone into uh, haunted locations including cemeteries where we come straight out and and talk about christ and him dying on the cross for our sins and have the whole place quiet where before our our voice our the ghost box the sb11 was going off like crazy we we're getting evps um, we were having paranormal experiences, and then once we talk about that, it would go hush, hush. So I have to put all that together. Um, and to me personally, um, because I, in the field of demonology, I heard in a program, and I believe it was yours, you had a guest that was talking about how our own, um, our own thoughts and our own we could uh, people that are alive can come through a ghost box sure yeah well yeah and uh you know i listen to it and i'm very open-minded to people's different definition of things and theories um the thing is also on my side of demonology i also know that these entities purposely mimic the living mimic the dead uh to get close to you to have you like they'll come as you come to you as a child that they're they're definitely good at that coming to you as a child um that way you're you're thinking oh my goodness there's a child ghost how sad how god could god do this to a child who's so innocent that passed on and you get attached to that child to that ghost entity and you want to communicate with it and you want to help it and that's how it gets the attachment. First thing you know, you have the infestation. Then you have the attachment. And first thing you know, it you're not dealing with a child ghost anymore. You're dealing with some something evil and horrible. And you start blacking out. And first thing you know, you're doing things that you normally wouldn't do. And you you wake up and you're saying, "Oh my goodness, why am I in a mental institution? Why am I in jail? Why, well, what, why did I do cer certain things?" So yeah. Um, it, 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 uh, it, this is from the, the the demonology side from what I've studied and experienced. Sure. Just when I thought I had figured something out, you go in and just say, <laughs> 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 yeah. well, guess what? Here's another 40 possibilities for that one. Now, but you're exactly yeah. right. I mean, and, and that's that's what this is all about. It's, you know, we, we all have to talk about these things and be open to others ideas and opinions because that, that's what a lot of this is and i yeah. just find that so fascinating where it, it, it honestly seems that as of late i mean I, i've been doing this show and, and talking ghosts now for you know if i'm gonna round it out we're near 10 years that we're about eight realistically but on, on the podcast but i've been on the air for 20 some years prior still doing ghost stuff on terrestrial radio and mm -hmm. and i hadn't heard um you know th this idea until as of late of of the the living 
projecting themselves as ghosts other than like astral projections and things of that nature. But even then it wasn't the, that others were seeing them or, or mm -hmm. feeling them as, as spirits or ghosts. But th that adds another question to that whole I equation of, well, in fact, was it them uh, or was it something mimicking them, um, you know, mm -hmm. at, at the same time? You know, doppelgangers are an interesting thing uh, when, mm -hmm. when it comes to that, because there's there's this area where I've had stories of people who in their dream went to from point A to point B and they remember it in their dream and then they actually can get confirmation from those at point B that they saw them there. And there is a conscious memory on both parts of that person being there, yet they were never physically there. Um, mm -hmm. And that, to me, seems like that was probably likely that person. It wasn't somebody something imitating it because they, they have knowledge. They may remember it. But when you get mm -hmm. to that, that doppelganger world, that's where that individual doesn't have any knowledge of being, you know, at the mall the other day, you know, or, or whatever it mm -hmm. was. And they weren't there, but yet someone said they had a full conversation with them that was kind of off. Uh, are doppelgangers, uh, when we talk about that, is that something that, that you believe falls more into the ghostly realm of things or more into the demonic realm of things? That's a very good question, Tony. Very good question. I, I believe that it's more to the demonic side because, again, you said that, uh, and, I, and I've read and I've also uh, heard it from other people, that something isn't right. Um, yeah. And that's usually the case uh, of people where they've seen entities of their loved ones. Um, oftentimes I've heard that something wasn't exactly right or something was amiss. Um, so, yes, because they take on the form because these entities are shape shifters. Excuse me, shapeshifters. <laughs> yes. And uh, they will take any form, uh, sometimes solid. You, you know, don't, again, we're going to go back to these angels from heaven. They can come to as a solid form and you wouldn't even know it. Uh, I've seen uh, entities, ghosts in, in cemeteries that were solid. They were peeking around a corner somewhere or in a house. I've seen them solid form. I've seen... Um, you know, shadow people. I've seen dark form, uh, uh, that one shadow uh, demonic. Um, when I was playing with the Ouija board for the first time, that was a shadow, but it was a uh, perfect form, um, you know. So, and I've seen them where they come as a beautiful person. Um, and they'll come to you real close, like on Route 20, when I was walking down Route 20, it was in the middle of the night, approximately around 2, 3 o'clock. Um, and I remember that this woman was very beautiful on my side of the street. And I was walking, and I'm thinking to myself, why is a beautiful woman walking at 2 o'clock in the morning out in the street, you know? It didn't make sense, but I just noticed that she was very beautiful, and I w walked under a street lamp, and I could see her, and she all of a sudden I noticed right off the bat something wasn't right, mm -hmm. and she was above, the, she was like levitating. She, she was walking, but it, she became levitating, and when she came close, she had hideous teeth, and she turned into a hag, and she went through me, and when she went through me, um, it stunned me. It didn't paralyze me, but it, I felt it go through like a shock. Mm -hmm. And I remember yelling. Um, so they can come as a cat. They can come as a dog. They can uh, come as a material object. They will manipulate um, material objects. So, and usually, like, again, when I've gone to cases, it's not like a piece of paper or book that they throw on the floor. Or light, it's usually a pyramid of chairs on a, on a dining room table in a pyramid or heavy objects being thrown, uh, uh, refrigerators being knocked over, uh, things smashing hard against the wall. And there's times where I've heard things uh, smash against the wall and I s swore that it, it broke and there was not a mark on it laying on the floor. But it sounded like it was thrown in full force. Sure. 
That wraps up the first part of our conversation with Peter James Dowling on demonic culture in part two. What were some of Peter's fears when he began investigating demons and trying to help those who were suffering? What does Peter fear today now that this is part of his world? And is he a target for dark entities even after a case is closed just because they seem to know who he is with a target on his back? And people who fall into the trap of demonology with good intentions, but still it ends up turning dark very quickly. What are some of those traps and what has happened to some who have gone down that road? Until next time for The Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.